Hi all. In this video, let's learn about some of the interview questions. So this is a part 11 of web and front end interview questions. So let's see these interview questions in this video. So the first question is, so this is a common question and a very much important question, how to center the elements. So we'll uh, explain you different ways to do that. So we have a main div. So this is a parent div. How to make this children div center to this parent div. So this is a most common and the important question. So let's see different ways. So the first way we'll see regarding the flux box. So firstly, the parent, uh, we are going to give the property as flux. Okay, so now the parent div will have a flux display and we will be giving justify content as center and align elements as center. So these are the properties we need to use to the parent class. So now if you see the output, so it will center to the div, the children, all the children elements given below the parent will be centered to the div element. So this is the first way. So this is a flex box way of declaring. So let's discuss the another way, the grid way. So let's see that. So I will uh, remove these properties. Okay. So as we said, it is a grid. So we'll use instead flex, we'll be using grid here display grid and now we have another property like place the items center so this is another property so this is a second way of making the elements to the center so now you see the same output we'll be getting so these are the first two methods and these are the common uh, um, latest methods we'll be using the grid and the flexbox ways so we have the other two methods like margin property so the third thing we'll be discussing now this is a margin property way so here what we'll be doing is we'll do display as a grid and to the children to the child class you will be applying the margin auto so this is known as a margin property way so this is the third way we'll be having so the output would be the same in all the ways so these are the ways we have okay so this is the margin property way. So coming to the absolute property way. So let's discuss the fourth way here. In the absolute property way, we'll discuss uh, the parent component. We'll give the position. The position will be the relative. The child component position should be absolute to the parent component. So here we'll give the position as absolute. Now, this child element will align absolute to this position so we are this child element we are aligning this position to absolute to this parent position so that's the reason we'll give the top as 50 percent and the left as 50 percent and now we'll transform give a transform and transit so this was the old way of doing centering the elements so now in this way this is a absolute property way of making the elements center to, to the page. So in all these ways, we'll be getting the elements to the center of the page. So this is a, uh, about the centering the elements to the page. Next, going to the second interview question, why we need Z index and what is its importance? So for example, you may have a few, seen few applications where you your image will be throughout the application, the background image and the logo or the branding will be on the top of this image like this. So in these cases, in these cases, usually if you not give Z index, so what happens? So I will remove the Z index, what, what happens? Let's see. So the image has overread. So it, it overlapped the element, the text element. So usually why we use this Z index is, this Z index is a CSS property. This will tell the stack order of the elements. So how the elements should overlap in an order, in which order it should be overlapped. So that one, it will be explaining. So our requirement is the text should come on top of the logo, on top of the image. So that's the reason we are giving Z index in terms of minus to the image. That's the reason the image is going behind the text. So if I run it again, it is going behind the text. So this happens. So it means the ZDNX, higher value ZDNX will be on the top. It will be placed on the top. If the ZDNX is low, it will go behind the screens. So usually we have not defined any of the ZDNX to the P tag. So for this text, we have not defined any ZDNX. So now in these cases, the ZDNX would be auto. So 
R2 is more than minus. So that's the reason minus one ZDNS is went behind this R2. So this is a uh, one thing. So coming to the few other points, ZDNS will only work when you have the position as absolute, relative or fixed. For example, if I remove this position, so I'm removing this position. So it will not work. See, it will come uh, one by one. See, the images will come one after the other in this way. So that's the reason ZDNX will only work when you have the position. You need to give some position to make it work. So now the position is absolute. That's the reason. Uh, what I mean is while you are using ZDNX property, the position property is necessary. If not, uh, elements will align one after the other. Here, the requirement is we want to show the elements on top of each other. So that's the reason you need to use this position absolute and also the Z index. The higher the Z index, the, the element will come for, foreground. If the Z index is lower, it will be behind the element. So that in that way, it will work. So let's see one more example with this Z index. So all these divs, so whatever you see the boxes here, those are the divs. Those Z indexes are auto here. And for this divs, the Z index is six, four, two. As the six is more, it is on the top. Four is more than two, so it is on. Uh, it it overlapped the two div, and the element which is behind all these elements, it has auto. The JD next it has auto, so that's the reason it is behind the screens. So if I select its div, so this div, JD next as one, so this one is greater than this auto, so it will come foreground. So see, it has now came to foreground. It has overlapped the previous elements. If we give three. So it will overlap the element of the two. It means it is coming forward. So the order of the stack, it is uh, increasing. As a higher the Z index, the element will come front. If it is low, it will go back. It will, uh, it will go behind the elements. So if it is five, then it will overlap the Z index four. If it is seven, it will overlap this. So as a higher the Z index, it will be on the foreground. If it is lower, it will be behind the things. So it depends upon the, like if you wanted to use a big um, background image throughout your web page and on top of that, if you want to uh, add your branding, your uh, text, anything on that image, you usually we used to go for the ZDNX. So this is a second interview question. So now coming to the form. So for example, let, let me uncomment this. So usually I have taken a form tag. So in this form tag, we have one email so in which we have given that as a required. And when I click this submit button, what this form tag usually do is, it will validate whether the element is entered or not, whether the field has given input value or not, because you have given required. So if you not enter any value, it will tell this field is required. So this is a validation usually automatically do, done by this form tag. Okay, now let's see that. So I'm a, Verifying. So I'm, I will not enter any output and I will submit it. So it will show us, please fill this field. We have not given this any uh, validation, but as we have mentioned it as required and we are using the form tag, it is doing automatically this validation. So if you don't want to handle these type of validations automatically by form, form tag, then you need to give this attribute. So that is the purpose of this attribute, no validate. It means now, this form will not validate this form, this form uh, attribute, no validate attribute. If you go to this form tag, now on submit of this form, it will not validate the form. Without this no validate, it will validate the form on submit button. So now what we, we are saying is no validate. It means we are asking the form tag not to validate this form on submit of, on submitting this button. So usually why we do, uh, let, let me show you now. So I have clicked submit. If you see, uh, it is not showing me any of the mandatory alerts or uh, any validations here. The reason why we use this no validate is in order to handle the, these validations on our own. We don't want to give the validations to the form. Uh, it, this will help us uh, in terms of if you're working with ReactJS, you can use a Formic or a UP validation library. So in that case, it means you're handling the validations on your own. So in these situations, this no validate attribute will help us. So this is a third one. And coming to the fourth point, working with the query parameters. So for example, so if, if, he, 
here if you see this is known as a query parameter what does this exactly do means it will generate a proper response if you give any query parameter so this is known as a query parameter if you give this it means it will ask the server to give to respond a proper response to our input so how to get these uh, query parameters in the javascript we have a api to access this query parameters that is url search parameter so let me uh, use that so how to get this uh, exact query parameter means we have a window dot location dot search so if you do this so it has given us the query parameter so after this question mark whatever we give this this is known as a query parameter right so now we want to extract you we want to access what is given in this query parameter usually we do this in the node.js applications whenever you do a query parameter hit from the front end javascript application now the back end it needs to understand what are the query parameters so it will extract the query parameters it will understand what all the parameters we passed its key and values and it will give us the proper response to us so this is how you need to access the query parameters and now how to handle this so uh, let me show an example so i am uh, using constant params is equal to new so this is the javascript api we have search url search params so in this api we should not provide a full url length as a parameter we need to give till the search parameter itself so we should not provide entire url here as a parameter we should provide only the window dot location dots only we need to provide the search query so that's the reason so now i am clicking this now in this params will be having this content will we have uh, will be having certain methods to access this parameters so let's say in this params now I'm, i will check whether params dot has so whether i have a test property or not it returned true it means because you have a test param so that's the reason it is written true so how to get the test param value so first check whether it is available or not so yes that parameter is available so now you can get that parameter value so just get is a, another method you can get it so it will give the first as a value so now i'm checking whether the test query parameter is there or not if it is present i'm trying to access that value based on these values in the node.js applications in the backend applications it will try to get the required proper output response for us so in this way you can do and also you can loop through all these uh, query parameters you can use a you can use any for loop so here you can use a for loops like this and you can uh, you can loop through all the query params so like this so you can now uh, use this for loop so and uh, here you can just console or uh, you can uh, now i am doing a param now yes if i print so it will give us all the key value pairs of the query parameters also you have keys so you can also just if you want only the keys you have key properties on value properties so there are other many methods which you can use with this url search params the main part you need to understand is we can extract the query parameters with the help of javascript api that is url search params for that you need to give only the search parameter window dot location dot search as a input not entire url most of the times many of them will give entire url that's the thing and uh, if you have more params also you can loop through each params each keys each values and you can get appropriate results so this is all about the getting and accessing the query parameters in java in javascript Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.